Hi, this is Amy Lewis. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, welcome to another episode of Engineers Unplugged. We're here with Niels and Joe, and we're going to be talking about application affinity. So, who's taking the, the mic first? I think Niels. I'll take the mic. Excellent. All right. Um, so, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. I mean, this is cool stuff. Um, we are uh, going to talk about application affinity. And sort of the base premise here is, is the following. Um, you know, in today's time, and certainly with VMworld around the corner, um, we clearly have this notion of sort of application world. You are either in the application world, you own applications, you manage them, or you provision them, um, and that's like a that's a you know pretty substantial portion of budgets that most companies have. And on the other side, we've got sort of the network world. And uh, today's announcements at uh, VMworld were kind of interesting, where we can see the VMworld uh, certainly VMware wants to pay a lot more attention not just on the application side, but also on the network side. Now, the key point that we've seen over the last few years um, is the following, that it's traditionally seen as two separate worlds where it's applications only and they don't really interact with the network. Um, and the network itself, who kind of knows something about uh, applications perhaps, but isn't really involved in a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and the sort of tyranny of or is something that we want to certainly challenge. It's not very healthy to have just applications, uh, not knowing anything about the network, or vice versa. And that's kind of the starting point of our conversation today. Uh, agreed. Now I'm trying to figure out where that segue went. You left me hanging. So uh, <laughs> what we're trying to what we're trying to talk about there's really a um, there's two disparate uh, ways to think about the way in which you do network virtualization and, and software overlay underlay all of these different words. Where where we move the network forward, I think, is different philosophy. Is that about right? Yes. So we're looking at you've got the the VMware view of the world, and and that's the network virtualization view of the world, and they want to take the current network and virtualize it up, place it up with the apps in the hypervisor, and then run it there. And so that, what, you get uh, some more automation and faster speed of deployment. But what they're still not doing there, um, that we, we, I think, both agree you need to do, is give a more application-centric view and more, better application affinity to the network so that you can kind of tie these two worlds better together and deploy this in a way that makes sense to this and provides the best feature set. Is that about right now. Yeah, so the, the thing that we're, uh, um, you know, if you talk about these two worlds, then uh, in reality, the big question to ask is, what's the relevance of sort of the network of knowing stuff about applications? And haven't we tried this before? Uh, and if so, if we have tried it before, have we learned a lot from it? Um, and if we do something different this time around, what is it we would do different? And I think um, what we've definitely seen over the last, uh, you know, 15, 20 years is that there's been uh, activities around sort of DPIing your way into the network and figuring out what network activity is currently happening. You know, is this an Oracle connection or not? Um, that's, you know, all fantastic. But the real thing that's missing is application intent. You don't know what the higher level goal was of the application because let's be honest, SAP might be business critical or not, but what's the difference between a development environment for SAP versus a real environment? And the question is, can we kind of move that knowledge of the application into the network so that it can perform uh, better? Um, and I think you have a similar view on this, but um, the real question is, uh, you have some experience with the sort of DPIing of the world. Is, uh, can you share a little bit about where that goes wrong and uh, perhaps how we can still use some of that? Sure. So there's been a lot of tactics to try and provide more application intelligence uh, to the network from the ground up, using the network to gain that, app, that application intelligence from the things they can see, deep packet inspection and things like that. And what it turns out is, is this becomes very expensive, especially at scale and especially as the bandwidth increases because of the cost of chips that can do that at line rate. And it's kludgy because the network doesn't have all of the details it needs to find out what's going on with the application. So I think a top-down approach where you're, you're defining that from the application layer, providing that information into the network, and then really drawing feedback, right? So you want the application to be able to provide some intent down and the network to be able to provide some sort of signaling back up to the application so you can work on SLAs. And when I say network providing signaling back up, I don't mean telling the developers that there's jitter and latency because they don't care. That's not terms they use. But to tell them that there's performance issues in a way that's palatable and, and digestible by them might be a very effective tool. Yeah, so what, we've, uh, what we have also seen, um, certainly at Plexi, we, we saw that we have to have that middle ground in here, and that's essentially about finding the right abstraction. 
Um, and finding the right abstraction is actually really hard because there's a natural tendency to put too much information in. So if I'm in the network world, then what I know and love are MAC addresses, VLAN tags, IP addresses. That's all great information for me on this side. Uh, but on your side, if you're kind of uh, you know on the application side here for this conversation, you're actually really interested in what are higher level business SLAs, uh, how do certain VMs communicate with each other, and which kind of relational database um, activities there are. Now the big question is, can you find common ground between the two, and not over specify information? And that's where uh, certainly affinity as a as a word came in. Affinity really describes a relationship, and more simply spoken, uh, you could almost say that. It's a simple language where um, you would say a front end for you know, a website talks to an application server. And that simple act of describing that relationship should probably not have more information than just that. So in other words, it would be something or, or along the lines of, I have a front end, and usually multiple front ends if we take you know, uh, popular web shops into consideration. So there are multiple of these front ends um, that talk to sort of a back end or an application server and ultimately, there might be a bit of a storage tier sort of at the back here. Um, and it's the relationship between these, these three where individually about this relationship we can say something about. For instance, front end to back end, we might be very um, conscious of latency. Whereas from back end to, to storage, because it's unencrypted data, we really perhaps want to um, sort of isolate that traffic. Agreed. And I think if you look at this, this is a, a great drawing you have here because this really becomes the application. It's not an application as a VM. An application is all of the components that make up the separate tiers as well as whatever the connectivity required in, in between them. So the way I like to look at this, if you don't mind holding that for a second. So you touched on a word, Nils, um, abstraction. So the way, I guess we'll have to close here, the way the world works today is you have the network, you have what matters to the business, which is the application, and then if I can steal this, you have this whole layer of complexity in between. And you can virtualize that complexity and bring it up, or you can take it out to a controller out here, but you're still running your applications on a layer of complexity above the network. What I think we both agree on is that the end goal would be to first wipe that complexity out and then provide that application affinity between the two tiers. Absolutely. There's a uh, there's almost a simple saying here. You know, if it's if it's simpler but not more than that, uh, it will be used by the application guys and likewise by the network guys. And there's lots of mathematics that we can use in the network to optimize based on those relationships that we know at the top, and vice versa. Applications can better uh, sort of uh, tee off of and sort of servo on what the network is able to deliver for them. So this is great stuff. Okay, so I have a question. Um, in removing the complexity, what are some of the advantages? That may seem like an obvious question, but I would assume that you're going to increase your risk of adoption. You're going to decrease your risk of failure. What's what? What? Talk to me a little bit about that. That sort of straightforward strategy. Excellent. So I think any time in the any time you have complexity, you're decreasing the, the, the rapid pace at which you can deploy. You're increasing troubleshooting time when something goes wrong, and also the, the technical skill set required to keep things up and running in the rest. So if you can simplify anything down and boil it down to its smallest parts, the ones that matter, you're always going to increase operational efficiency. And I'd say we've, we've had so much experience in the industry already of taking complex approaches. Um, let's try to actually make it so simple that people end up using it. Um, that's why you know removing that layer of complexity uh, helps basically bring adoption forward, brings bridges a gap on the even communicating with the application guys. You know, just making sure that they know what your constraints are and vice versa. Um, that should be a starting point where SEs and technical people talk to each other, and that should be sort of captivated or captured in uh, actual affinity definition. So um, I think this is uh, yes, it's simple and is very valuable because it's so simple. So, um, great steps forward, I hope. Well, and normally we have people draw a unicorn as part of our unicorn challenge on Engineers Unplugged, but I'm thinking that what you're telling me is a simplified unicorn is a horse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not even gonna try to dare them to draw a horse, because I know what they're gonna do to me here. So, <laughs> Niels and Joe, thank you so much for joining us on Engineers Unplugged. This was really interesting stuff. So we will see you next time on Engineers Unplugged. Mm -hmm.